So now that we've got all our files prepped, in this part of the tutorial, we're going to go through how to bake the low poly and high poly the cleanest way possible. So first of all, we want to go to new and we want to load in our low poly explode. And we can leave the settings on Unreal Engine 4 and 2K, that's fine. And then click OK. And first of all, you just want to make sure that your asset is imported correctly. So just check it over and also check your UVs over make sure that nothing is overlapping or going over the edge. Once you're happy with that, we can start the baking process. So to do that, we go to texture set settings. And if you can't find that, you can find it in one of the windows up here. Texture set settings under views. And we want to go down to bake mesh maps. So like I've explained before, you can start painting this in Substance Painter, but the beauty of Substance Painter is the procedural textures, and that is the ability for it to automatically find edges and cavities. Now with the model just loaded in like this, Substance Painter doesn't know anything about this model other than its UVs. It doesn't know which way it's up, down, it doesn't know the cavities, it doesn't know the curvatures. And to get that, you need to bake it from these maps here. So these maps need to be filled. So to do that, we go to Bake Mesh Maps. And in here, we have the settings for each of those different maps. So what I want to do, first of all, is just change this to 512, as we need to do some test bakes, first of all. I will also just increase anti-aliasing a little bit. And then I want to go to my High Definition Meshes. I want to click on this little paper icon, and I want to import the High Explode. Now I'm going to leave everything else as is for now, and then I'm going to bake this and check it for any errors. Okay, so this is baked now, and I'm just going to go over it, and I'm going to look for any seams, any edges that are baked with black spots in them, and also, if I can see, any areas where the cage that is created around the model, that envelopes the model, and bakes the, low, the high poly onto low poly, just going to make sure that there's no cutoff points where that indicates that, that that cage is too small to encompass the high poly. Now, this should be pretty accurate because the difference between the high poly and the low poly on this particular model isn't great. But for some things, especially organic things, you will definitely get some areas that will be flat and, and devoid of any kind of information. And that will be fixed by going to the max frontal distance and max real distance and then just increasing them a little tiny bit. And that will just boost up the size of that cage so that it can capture all the high poly details. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. So I'm going to bake my final high poly and I'm going to go to the output size and change that to 2K. And I'm going to go down to here to the subsampling and change that to 4x4. I'm also going to go to the ID map and change that from vertex color to mesh ID and change the generator to random. Now once that's baked, I'm just going to go over this, checking it for any errors. Um, what I'm looking for is any jagged seams, any black spots where the baking is baked through wrong, and things like that. Now this is a pretty neat bake. There are some small errors on it, uh, but they're small enough that they would be pretty much completely invisible once this is painted. Uh, but you do want to get this as close as possible to the bake that you wanted from your high poly. Now most of the issues that you'll get will be because of the UV map not being um, relaxed properly, so you'll have squash and stretch in your UV map, or will be from the low poly not matching up close enough to your high poly. Now, when I originally did this, I had them issues in this piece here. So you can see there are still some small issues around here, like the black shadowing here, and a few little baking errors where this is baking through to this. Now, I can't really get rid of them completely uh, with the way the mesh is at the moment, but what I did do uh, this was a lot worse. Uh, what I did do is add a bevel to the edge of this on the low poly, and I added a few extra loops around here as well. And um, let's see, you can see that bevel here. Now, this is just to support the baking process. What I will do is remove them once I come to use this as an asset later on. Uh, but to support this baking process, this is how I solved the issues that I had with this piece. Now it is important to note that before you export these low poly pieces to your uh, for baking in Substance Painter, that you remove any hard edges on your model. Now for some hard surface stuff, you would want hard edges to represent 
the hard edges on your low poly, but they must be on a UV border. With something like this, which is hard surface, but has a lot of soft pieces in it, it was easier for me just to soften everything and add a few uh, helping edges like these bevels to get a neater, uh, neater bake. Now, there's all sorts of problems and they are hard to solve, especially for a beginner. Uh, but as you begin to do more and more bakes like this, you will encounter those problems and you can often find a solution on Google. And if not, I'm happy to help them on an individual basis because there's just too many problems to cover in just one tutorial like this. So it's best if you just encounter them yourselves and then come to me and I'll have a look at your mesh, have a look at your UVs and tell you what might be causing those problems. Okay, so once you're happy with the bake from this, we can re-import our low poly and get this model back together again, ready for painting. So to do that, we can go to edit and project configuration. And then here, we just want to go to select at the top and load in our oil can low. So not the oil can explode, just the oil can low. And then we want to make sure our preserved strokes position is unticked and then click okay. Now you can see the oil can has come back together and kept all its maps. Now if you look in the texture set list, there's only one texture set. That's because the new low poly had exactly the same material as the exploded version. So it didn't create a new texture set. So now this is ready to be painted on. So one thing you should do before you're fully satisfied with the UVs and the bake is to quickly stick a smart material onto your model. And then go around that and then just check over all those edges to make sure that there is minimal warping of the UVs. So if there was some UV stretching in the UV here, we would be able to easily see it once this has some texture on like this. So once you're happy with how that's baked and the UVs, we can delete the layer and get ready to start painting our own.